What's up guys? Uh, we are now on our way out of Geneva. I've had a fantastic four days there and uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this is coming through on film but as we've left Geneva it started snowing. Schmi 150 is in front in uh, a Ferrari California T. Seb Delay is behind in his Lotus and I have been joined by the great photographer that is <laughs> Alex Malik along for the ride because Exactly. We're going back from Geneva to Paris, yep. which is where Alex lives. As you well know, I yeah. live in Paris. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, so we're basically going to have a bit of a chat about Geneva. Let's start from the very top. Screw it. What was your, <laughs> what's the star car, man? Well, as far as I'm concerned, for me, yeah. as I said, it was the Apollo Aero. I know it's not... Uh, well, no, it's interesting, man, because it's refreshing to hear someone else yeah. say something other than like the uh -huh. Chiron or something. You yeah, know? I know. So, most people would say like one of the, the big cars that were expected, sure. but I really, really like, enjoy the uh, Apollo Aero. Yeah. Because I don't, there's just something to it that speaks to me. Yeah. Even though it is a, how do you say, model car? Prototype. Prototype. Yeah. Like the, I suppose there's no interior because yeah. the windows were blacked out. For sure. Probably no engine, so. But it looks badass. It looks, it looks so good. It looks good. badass. Yeah, yeah. That, to me, it's the best of show. What about you? Cool. Um, Okay, so mine's a bit odd because it's not like a new car, but okay. the McLaren P1 that was on the McLaren stand blue with the, expo one? the exposed blue carbon yeah. for me was just phenomenal. Well, it's it the is the best phenomenal. looking P1 I've ever seen and no, it's just so, so good. So for me, even though that was an old car, uh -huh, it yeah, was, yeah. for me it was... It was best of shows. Yeah, best of shows, absolutely fantastic. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Let's go. Koenigsegg. It was re really refreshing to see the Regera in a color other than the ice blue. Yeah. Because that's all we've seen, like press so pictures far, yeah. on the stand last year, Geneva, Regera was this ice blue color. Yeah. It looked good, but it didn't really speak to me. Oh. This red they had, the iridescent red color of yes. that thing. And the car's come such a long way since then, like just being yes, in that okay. car, speaking with the guys on the stand. Yeah. Uh, they're taking me, they were telling me now, bearing in mind this car's like, 1.8 million euros, right? Yes, yeah. They're but taking an order for one of those on average every week. One a week. That's that's a mad lot. madness. That's yeah. a lot. So speaking See, I, I, with I the did guys there, that, yeah, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy world. So speaking with the guys there, if you order a Regera now, uh -huh. you're looking at 2019 for a car. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Crazy. I know. In fact, I would say the Koenigsegg stand was probably the most colorful stand of the it show. It was. You know, it was, it was like uh, I, Skittles. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, interesting topic of, of the one of one, uh -huh. not to be confused of, with the one one. With the one one, yeah. Right? <laughs> it is very confusing it's, as well. It's confusing. I yeah. So, one of one program is my understanding that it was they allowed customers to go even further the with G2 customizing Rail. the car. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. So, even the wing on that thing was, was had a lot of input from the, the customer on, on how they wanted it okay. to look, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you've got a car that's capable of like 250 miles an hour, yeah. you've got to get the wing working right. Yeah, so the client there comes be up no with the problem. shape. Yeah, so, but it, amazing that they let a client come up with the uh -huh. shape and design. Yeah. They put it through aero tunnel to make sure it works, and out uh -huh. comes this bespoke beautiful wing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it had like triple canards on the front. Just everything about that car was next level yeah. personalization. I thought that was fantastic. I think so the wing, one of the uh, few brands that you can just go uh, totally custom. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's fantastic. I suppose you can't do that with a Chiron, say. No, no like, exactly. I, I want to change the wing. Uh, yeah, I'd like no, to they change were like, the Are wing. you kidding? As far as that aerodynamics go, I don't <laughs> exactly. think that's going to work no, out. That's yeah. probably <laughs> not happening. Okay. So, uh, Speaking of the Chiron, uh -huh. hit me. What are your thoughts, man? Because i got to be honest, it's people I speak to around Geneva, there's been a bit of uh, love-hate with that car. Love-hate, you know, love yeah. Name, so okay, as far as I'm concerned, and that's just my opinion, yeah. I really like the Chiron. It might be uh, a bit uh, less gracious than the than the Bugatti, which was agree. A, more elegant, a, huh? a more elegant, yeah, a pebble. Sure. Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, smooth. Yeah, this one feels so. a bit more squarish, uh, that's as far as look goes. Ghost, but Definitely more aggressive, right? More aggressive. Like that thing, all of a sudden, it becomes intimidating, that car. It does. Yeah. However, yeah. I would say that uh, the Bonnet, you know, what we talked about this morning, the fact that mm. most Veyrons have, uh, you know, two-tone on the Bonnet. Yeah. That adds aggressivity as far as I'm concerned. It does, it I does, th yeah. We're talking about the, the sort of product life cycle of a Bugatti 
product. Uh -huh. yeah. Thinking about uh, the Veyron, uh -huh. you know, that, that thing was for sale for like 10 years. You could order yeah. one of those cars yeah. for, for like a span of about 10 years. That's true. And the iterations and the variations that we had of that car, they got more aggressive over time. So we're thinking Grand yeah. Sport, Vitesse, Grand Sport, Super Sport, Super Sport those yes, sort of things. Yeah. Like if you put a, the original Veyron and a, and a Super Sport next, next to each other, even that evolution is more aggressive. It is. Uh, yeah, it so in, is. in like five years time when they come up with the, the next with version the of the Chiron, Chiron yeah. I'm sure we're going to see something quite spectacular. Yeah. So, so yeah, the interior. Yeah, cool. Inter you, you've been inside the Chiron, haven't I was you? very fortunate to go inside the uh, Chiron. Uh -huh. um, the interior is as good as the exterior. It's just next level. And do you know what doesn't come across on camera is how it the feelings, like just uh -huh. moving the uh, knobs. Knobs and stuff, yeah. Tim in front's making some noise. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, yeah in the <laughs> interior, just turning, like dealing with the buttons, to turning, uh -huh. turning the dials. It feels it just, good. Like, feel. I know this is a small thing, but just the way things yeah. click. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, you can tell someone put a lot of time in, into that. Hey, guys. Hey, we're just doing a video. <laughs> Sorry, Tim just pulled up the long side and asked us to make some noise, so yeah. there's some noise. I don't know why I got my sunglasses on, it's snowing. It's snowing right now. Man. It's snowing very Dude, heavily get this, actually. Get this camera out and just uh, let's right. share with everyone just what the hell is going on up front. Let's so see. we've been coasting for about 20 miles an hour oh, wow. because we've got Gritters out. Snow? Would you say like snow gritters or snow plow? A lot of snow. The environment's fantastic, but for, for progress, this is not not ideal. Yeah, we're not going yeah. very fast. We're not at going the very moment. fast. Let's film this man. People will know let's this guy. Let's film this man. Yeah, let's film. I don't know who he guy. is. Someone recognize him? I I know him from somewhere, right? Yeah, he's. Yeah. He looks familiar. Driving a red oh, car. Yes, he's driving a red car. I don't know we're what in brand. The is. snow. <laughs> so yeah, Chiron's yeah. cool. Chiron. Pagani. Pagani. Talk to me. Um, the BC. BC. Okay. Huayra BC. Right. So interesting trivia. The reason the Huayra BC is called the BC uh -huh. is because the uh, first client of Pagani to yeah. ever buy the first Zonda uh, his initials were BC. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, he recently passed away. Indeed, he did, yeah. And so the the Huayra BC is in honor and in tribute of the first the, client. The coolest part of the car for me. Go on. The 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 wing. The wing eyes. Oh, it's, it's obviously the yeah. I, the way I see it. It's the uh, trademark of the BC. The, the most uh, poignant feature. It is. Special feature of that car. How it, that's how I see it. It's a big ass car, but wing. Exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's not just any wing. Yeah. The wing, to me, looks like an aquatic animal, an aquatic predator, okay. like a shark yeah. fin, basically. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, the wing very is, much the side profile of that it's, wing. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a bit oh. curved. Yeah, absolutely. When I saw the teaser shots Pagani had uh, published on social media, yeah. uh, with the how do you say the shadow yes. of the wing, yeah. Yeah. I was like. Oh, that looks oh, interesting. so cool. <laughs> so, let's talk about some more normal cars. Let's step this, go down okay. a notch. I'll try. Into I'll the realms try. of reality. Okay. Uh, one trend that I've noticed, right? Yeah. Forged carbon, uh -huh. right? And forged carbon in the past has typically always been like a sort of satin matte finish. Think of the, the exposed forged carbon in the back of the um, Huracan when it launched, okay? Okay, in, yeah. In the engine bay. Uh -huh. You look inside the Huracan Spider, the DB11. Mm -hmm. These guys had a lot of forged carbon, but it's all gloss. And it looked absolutely fantastic. It, yeah. It's one of my favorite features of the whole show is this use of, uh, of forged carbon. To my eyes, it's like, yeah. it almost looks like marble. It's Come amazing. to the show. Yeah. Details Dude. make the difference. In, the, a, in a this single bracket, detail can make when, a you're, when you're sort of spending that kind of Money. Uh -huh. I mean, and let's look at extremes here. If we go back quickly to these hyper cars, uh -huh. the details are what make it that extra special. You are right. You know what you I mean? Right, yeah. So if you can filter a, a little bit of that down uh -huh. towards these supercars, throw in some details like this forged carbon, to, to me it enhances the experience so much, you know. So, yeah. one of the star cars, or one of the most talked about cars of the show, McLaren 
570 GT. What do you reckon? Yeah. I, I feel like the range yeah. of McLaren, there are, it's very diverse. I don't know. Yeah. Does it, yeah, yeah. you say that? Very diverse? Yeah, it's diverse, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. And I'm starting to get a bit confused about okay. who is who, what does what, yeah. what, what's the purpose of each car? Like, who's it for? Yeah, sure. Who's it for? Okay. So, I was fortunate enough before the trip to go out in a 570S. Okay. I was very impressed with that car. Okay. It's fantastic. The unique selling point of this car, and, the, and let's face it, the biggest difference between the 570S and the 570 GT yeah. is the fact that it's got a boot. But let's not beat around the bush. It yeah, has okay? a big boot, is it? Sure? It has a boot, okay? So it's a 570 that, with tells back me. space. That's yeah. what everyone tells me, so. But what's interesting about this proposition is, I don't think it's a big enough difference to I don't care about that. I don't care about it about because boot space, yeah. you know the boot in the front of the 570S is big enough. You know, I it's agree, okay. I agree. So for someone to say, uh, yeah, but this has uh, this bigger boot and you can access it easier. <laughs> yeah. What like this much? Like what? Yeah, yeah. There's more space for a briefcase. Exactly. Like, that's, that's for me, it, that's just it just doesn't appeal at uh, all. Like uh, it's. I don't know. I'm I'm not buying that car so I can fit bags in it. I know. You know? Exactly. Like if I'm concerned about bag space, I'm buying a, a state car yeah, yeah, or no something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's, for me, that car is not a GT car. Uh -huh. You know, think of think of our sort of GTs at the minute. A DB11. That's a GT car. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I do. So to call a 570S with a boot a GT car? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's uh, I think it's it's stretching it a bit a bit thin. Ferrari. Ferrari. What's new uh, GTC4 GTC4 Luso. Luso, aka New FF. Normally when I see cars in, in a press release, uh -huh. they always look better in person. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying this with a bit of hesitation because the FF, when they launched that car, I didn't I didn't like the aesthetics of it. Uh-huh. Now, further down the line, it's uh, I really love it. Luso, I was surprised to not be as satisfied when I saw it in person. But maybe the Luso is gonna grow on me just like the FF well, did. Uh -huh. Biggest change is interior. We got a proper modern day setup, modern day dash. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like a 10 inch 10 inch screen in there. Yeah, it is huge. Uh, Apple CarPlay yeah. hooked up now. And also what's really cool, and I think this is where something's going, uh -huh. interaction for the passenger. That's what I, I was going to say that. I think that's really cool. See all the details on the passenger's yeah. seat. You can do all sorts of stuff in there. Like, it's, they can even control the entertainment and the music. Exactly, that's which, I think is, which I think is a good thing it's, because a lot of the time you're so driving, cool. you're it's concentrating, so cool. you'd be like, okay, yeah. you could be DJ. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got like speed, gears, like even sat nav information. It's very, like, very cool. Right. Porsche. Okay. Uh, forget everything else, 911R. I'm going to cut straight to the chase and just say, obviously, no doubt, it's going to be a fantastic driver's car. Yeah. I get that out, out of the way. It's based on the RS. 991 RS, so we've got yeah. four liter engine, yeah. eight and a half thousand RPM. No doubt it's going to be a fantastic driver's car. That's what everyone tells me. However, that. I am disappointed aesthetically uh -huh. because, and people might slay me for this, but they've just taken the wing off an RS, and that's it. Like, like that is it. <laughs> like they haven't even bothered to give us new wheels. They have the same wheels on the GT3, yeah. same wheels on the RS. I think for a car that's in uh, that is in such a niche, niche unique yeah. space, and it's substantially more expensive, okay? It is. More than an RS, right? Which is supposed to be the most aggressive, fastest car. Personally think it's crying out for a ducktail. I think it wants like a ducktail. Like on the on sport, yeah, sport Classic. On the Sport Classic. That I would be nice. It needs a, a, a ducktail. And there's this odd mismatch between the interior and the exterior because the interior, it has this historic feel about it. Have the outside, it's just 991 GT3. Anyway, uh, fantastic behind the wheel, no doubt. Obviously, we can't comment on that yet, but disappointing from an aesthetics point of view, personally. No. RS6 performance, I'm a big fan of the RS6. Uh, the RS6 performance, very nice. I went, uh, sat on the, the interior of that car. Loads of Alcantara, contrast blue stitching, matching the exterior. One of the more unique features that I've seen, particularly for a car at this price point, um, the interior carbon fiber had a weave the same color as the exterior of the car. Yes. Which I think for what is yeah. a fast 
a state car. Uh -huh. Very cool. Again, we're talking about detail and care again. The manufacturers are really starting to up their game with these things. Great the car, which we've missed out. The, the Centenario. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, oh boy. Now for me. Yeah. Okay, the last few years, the last few shows, Frankfurt, uh, Geneva is of the past. Lamborghini have gone a bit crazy. Let's face it. We've had yeah. the Ego Easter, the Benino. These these types of cars. The Vincent Jay. Just things which are just completely mental. Yeah. Centenario, okay, they've turned it up to 11 again and it's pretty crazy, but it's actually in the realms of reality. It feels like a road car still. It doesn't feel like it's from space. No, it doesn't. It's, unless you look at it solely from, from the back. That's pretty crazy. I'll be very blunt yeah. and honest. Um, I think that as an homage to Ferruccio Lamborghini, yeah. it's not the best homage that they've done. I would agree. I would agree with uh, that. Yeah. It's very cool. It is but cool. Is it fitting for something of such legend? Uh, the car that was shown at the show had uh -huh. the full exposed carbon body. Yeah. That is actually optional, optional extra, and it is a quarter of a million euro. Are you the one who told me that already? Maybe. Uh, I, 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 don't heard that I don't know. I don't know. Yesterday. Uh, it's yeah. just an interesting statistic Fact, yeah. because what what is interesting about that? There was not another car on the stand which was as much as the body kit on that car. Yeah, yeah, that, that's Which I think crazy. is quite an interesting thing. Crazy. You know, it's, it's very easy to become quite blasé about the prices and figures when you're walking around these cars. Yeah, you know, when yeah. you're speaking like, about Koenigsegg and things like that, totally different planet. But to put things into perspective, just the exposed carbon on that car is more than yeah. any other car that was on the stand. So, yeah. The DB11 I really like. I like it as well, Yeah. but... It's not as cool as Pekachev. It's not as cool as the DB10. Well, do you know, I said, to, I asked a guy on the stand, I said, you know, why why did you go from DB9 to jump to DB11? You know, why didn't you make a production version of the, uh, the DB10? DB10? Yeah. He said, we allocated DB10 specifically to the Bond franchise, uh, okay. which is interesting because I guess they, they're going to either have to use the DB10 again in future Bond films, okay. or that's that, that, that car's done now. I think. You know? Which is a shame. He also said yeah. something interesting what was that um, they didn't do a DB8 between 7 and 9 because they thought the jump, the evolution of the car was so much that the number 8 didn't do it justice. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm like, is that good sales talk or is that is that right? I don't Who know. Knows? Who knows? So one day they're going to do a DBS equivalent of the DB11 yeah. and yeah. that thing is no doubt going to be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to them taking this thing and pumping it up, putting it on steroids and uh, something that's really aggressive sort of chunky yeah. you know anyway guys we are we've probably covered quite a few miles since we started we've been filming for 45 minutes now yep. although we've been going a bit slow because it's been snowing as, as you've seen yeah we're now heading to paris we're on the yep. road with shmi 150 seb delaney and we've got uh, i think i saw a sign back there we've got another 450 clicks to go yet yeah so uh yeah let's Long road ahead, of it, uh, but a good road. A good road, a good road. So, yeah. once again, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Alex Molek online. He's on Instagram, Twitter, Just type YouTube. Alex Molek. Alex Molek. Hit that guy up. And uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Ciao. Bye-bye.